Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. So this week we are going to work on a piece of furniture. Um, I set a challenge for myself to clear out some of my, my inventory and this is one of those pieces. It's a really clean, modern piece of furniture and I feel like when pieces have really clean lines, I also try to keep the finishes clean. So that will tell you that I try to take some of the cues for the styles that I use on furniture from the furniture itself. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do on this particular piece of furniture. Only I had an idea in my head for something that I wanted for the hardware that I could not find on the market at all. So I'm going to make it myself. Um, I also ran into a challenge on this one that forced me to kind of um, change my design ideas. And so I'm going to show you how to kind of roll with the punches on some things like that. Um, we're going to use One Hour Enamel from Wiseal Paint, which is a beautiful product that I'm excited to dive in a little more deeply with you guys as I go through the process of clearing out some of my inventory. Um, we're going to do some spraying, so I think there's going to be a lot of good information in this one. Stick around and let's get started. Here's where I started on this mid-century dresser, and I picked this up because it's got clean, modern lines. It's a really classic style. You can't go wrong. These pieces are kind of a blank slate. When I have pieces like this, I try to take cues on my finishes from the piece itself, and when I see clean, straight lines, I try to keep my finishes pretty clean and classic th themselves as well. I'm working on this piece in bulk, so I pulled several pieces out of my storage and I'm going to be working on them at the same time. I started on this piece by first giving it a thorough cleaning and next I'm going to give it a sanding using my surf prep sander. This is because the existing finish was a little bit flaky and had age to it and I wanted to give it a nice smooth finish before I started laying anything over the top. This is how my workspace looked while I was working on all of these pieces. I had them all out at the same time. I cleaned them all together. I scuff sanded them all together. This really saves a lot of time, as much work as it can be. Um, I ended up being able to get a lot of pieces done a lot quicker than normal. Because I needed to sand this piece a little bit to get that old crackling finish smooth, I had exposed the wood in some places, so I knew I needed to give this a coat of primer. This is Wiseal Primer in light gray, and I'm spraying it with a pneumatic sprayer. This sprayer is hooked up to an air compressor. The pros to using a pneumatic sprayer are that it gives a nice, smooth, even finish. The cons are that you have to use the air compressor, which means it's not very portable. Wiseal Primer sprays beautifully. It is a little bit thicker of a product out of the can, so I do need to dilute it a little bit before I can spray this on. After spraying a few times, you learn the consistency that you want to get from your products, and it's pretty easy to see that primers and a lot of paints need some dilution out of the container. One hour enamel and a lot of clear coats usually come in a consistency that you don't need to dilute them quite as much. Here's what my workspace looks like after all these pieces have been sprayed in their primer. You can see how much work this knocks out, but it's been quite a bit of effort. The color that I chose for this piece is from the Wiseal One Hour Enamel Collection, and I chose One Hour Enamel because it sprays beautifully. It's got a nice smooth finish. It dries to a satin finish without any need to top coat. So th now that I've got my primer underneath, I can spray on two coats of this One Hour Enamel, and this finish will be complete. One hour enamel sprays beautifully right out of the container. If you do need to, you can dilute it up to 10%. This is just my first coat of paint going on and I will need a second coat to get the full deep coverage that I want from this color. So you guys, I'm in the middle of working on this project and it's so beautiful. This is Wiseal One Hour Enamel and this color is called Poseidon. I love this color, but look at this finish. Look at the sheen on this. It is so beautiful. And this is just the paint. I don't even need to put a top coat on this. So I'm super pumped about it. It is absolutely beautiful. I just sprayed this. It's so perfect. This stuff sprays amazingly well. I just sprayed a whole bunch of pieces. I still have a lot of work to do on this one. I need to fix up the drawer. I have some cool hardware that I'm thinking of, but just a really cool mid-century piece. And now it's got this absolutely perfect finish on it. So I'm in love with this paint finish, but I did pull out the top drawer on this one to do something special too. This had kind of an old yellowy finish on it, and I want to remove that and take it down to the raw wood. But when I did, I found these plugs where there was some old hardware on these drawers. So that kind of messed up my plan to leave them in a solid wood finish. I need to add some sort of detail to camouflage those plugs. I decided to do a chevron pattern coming in from each side, so I'm going to tape off my chevron. I'm using a piece of painter's tape as my spacer in the middle of my tape, and then I'm going to pull that back and cut away these excess pieces, and that's going to give me my perfect 
chevron pattern. I'm going to repeat this process on both sides of my drawer and you'll notice how I placed my tape to perfectly go around those plugs that are in there. This is one of those things that's a happy accident and sometimes the piece kind of guides your finishes and that was the case here. I didn't plan to add anything to this top drawer, but in order to camouflage those plugs, I need to pull up this fun little detail onto this top drawer. Because I want to paint perfect stripes, I'm going to um, paint over the edges of my painter's tape using some clear coat. And that's going to allow any bleed through that goes under my painter's tape to be in the clear coat. And then when I pull that off with my paint, I'll get nice clean stripes. Now I'm going to put some of my Poseidon over that area. I, um, I did end up needing two coats on this as well. I'm just brushing on the Poseidon using an artist brush because this is a pretty small area. I sprayed the one hour enamel on the body of this piece, but it can also be brushed as well. It actually brushes remarkably easy. You want to get nice, nice, thin, even coats. Don't uh, rush to get coverage in one coat. After two coats, as long as they're thin and even, you'll get beautiful coverage with a nice smooth finish. Once this paint, I want to pull this painter's tape back while my paint is still wet. And you can see how adding that clear coat to the edges of my painter's tape gives me perfectly straight lines, even over the wood grain. I use this beautiful bold blue color on the body of this piece and so I'm going to go ahead and line the top drawer just so when that top drawer is open it's got a special finish on the front of it and also it's going to have a little special surprise inside as well. So I chose this beautiful paper. This is from Redesign with Prima. I'm going to start by measuring out in my drawer, cutting my piece to size, and I'm just using a heat gun to get it rid of any of the wrinkles that are in the paper from the packaging. I added two coats of white primer to the base of my drawer. White is going to make the colors on this paper pop the most. I'm going to be using Redesign with Prima Decoupage Gel to attach this paper. So I brush on a nice even coat underneath my paper. Then I'm going to find that 90 degree corner and go ahead and line this up and get my paper laid in place. Once I find my placement, I use the scraper tool from Redesign with Prima and I'm going to press out any air bubbles and push this into the corners of my drawer. I'm going to let this dry in place and I can come back and trim this paper ever so slightly if there's any edges that I still have some excess on. To fit the full size of this drawer, I did end up needing to seam a piece of paper together and so I found it as close of a match as possible and I added that little piece along the edge. Now I need to make some decisions about my hardware. I found some atomic stars that I needed, I wanted to copy to go along with the mid-century modern style of this piece and I'm going to do that using Amazing Mold Putty. Amazing Mold Putty allows me to really copy any piece of molding or hardware that I want to. In this case, I found some Atomic Stars just at a thrift store that I liked, and I'm going to try to make hardware backings out of them. So for this Mold Putty, um, it comes in a white part and a yellow, and I'm going to mix these together in equal portions. I mold them together in my hands until I get a nice, even, consistent color. You want it to be a light yellow all the way through with no marbling. It's sort of like playing with Play-Doh. Um, and the only thing you have to be careful of is you don't want to work with this too long. You have about 20 minutes before it starts setting up and becoming kind of rubbery. So you want to mix that mold putty together as soon as possible. Once you've got that part A and B touching each other, the chemical reaction between them is going to start and it's going to want to start solidifying. Once I've got them evenly mixed, I'm going to press my Atomic Star into the center and I'll let that dry. But I actually have two different sizes of Atomic Stars that I want to play with, and so I'm going to make a larger version as well. For this second star, I mixed up a second batch, and this time I need to spread it out a little more evenly. My paper plate ended up being too small, so I put it on a sheet of plastic and put my star in the center. And now I'm going to let this dry, and when I come back, it's going to be a solidified mold that I can reuse over and over and over again. Once this had solidified, I came back and I was able to just pop those atomic stars right out of the center and I've got two molds. You can imagine all the stuff that you could use the amazing mold putty for, anything that you can copy, and then you can keep these and have these molds on hand for future use. So now that I've got them, I need to mix up some amazing casting resin and I'm going to pour these into my molds to make copies of those atomic stars made from resin. I mix equal parts of A and B of my amazing casting resin and slowly drizzle those into my newly made molds. When you're using the Amazing Mold Putty, you do want to make sure that you mix it onto a flat back. And that's because when you set it for the Amazing Casting Resin to set up in them, you don't want to have a rounded back or an uneven back where it wants to sort of puddle off the edges. But I also want to show you a second option for making a mold, and that's this Amazing Mold Maker, also from Alumalite. This comes in equal parts of A and B, only these are a red and a white version. They're a liquid, and so you can pour this over anything that you want to make a copy of, and it will also set up and solidify and make a mold. 
I combine the red and white portions into a cup and I'm going to stir them together until they become an even color. Once those are mixed together, I can pour them into my small dish here that I'm going to use to make my mold, press my atomic star into the center, and this is also going to solidify and make a mold. I can cast my amazing casting resin into those much the same way that I did the yellow version. So these are two great options for copying just about any piece of molding, or in this case, a hardware piece that you want. So now I'm going to mix up my amazing casting resin and I'm going to make a copy of that same atomic star using these molds that I just made in the mold maker as well. For comparison purposes, I think either one of these worked great. The results ended up being perfect on both versions, so I don't really have a recommendation one way or another. I think the real difference is with the yellow mold putty, it mixes into a putty that has the consistency of like a Play-Doh, whereas the red version mixes into more of a liquid. So whether you want to pour it or you want to mold it around in more of a solid version. After my amazing casting resin had set up, I popped those out of my mold and I spray painted them just using some spray paint. Now I'm gonna attach them to my furniture piece using some tight bond quick and thick adhesive. I did drill out the centers and that's where the hardware screws for my knobs is going to go. Once my adhesive is on, I'm gonna line those up with the hardware holes on the body of my furniture piece using the screw that's on my hardware. I got these pulls from Hobby Lobby and I think they're gonna be really cute as the centers of my atomic stars. I'm gonna let that glue dry overnight. And when I came back, I had Atomic Star hardware that is so adorable. You guys, this piece is complete. The only um, drawer that I needed to top coat was that top drawer where I had the exposed wood, but I didn't need to top coat any of the rest of this piece. So this one is complete. I took photos of it, staging it with some classic artwork. My artwork also pulls in that bold blue from the body of the piece. The Atomic Star hardware is my favorite part. It perfectly suits the mid-century modern style. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Don't forget to click that subscribe button.